Grace and peace to you, sisters and brothers. My name is Amy Wilson Feltz, and I am the pastor of St. Paul's United Methodist Church in El Paso, Texas. I'm so glad that you have joined me for coffee this morning. I have said it before, but this time is really nourishing for my soul because I find that by the middle of the week, I really need some extra encouragement just for daily living. So thank you for offering me your time as you can. It's good to be with you on this Wednesday morning. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about words because words are where we are living in our household right now. And we've talked a little bit about this before as our kids, Natalie and Augie, are rapidly developing their vocabulary. They are four and a half and five and a half, which means for us that someone in the felt household has been four years old for a year and a half. <laughs> and I don't know about you all who have parenting experience, but four is a difficult age for us in this house. It comes with a lot of willful action, a lot of demands, a lot of loud expression, <laughs> a lot of angry words. And so we are working on how to communicate with kindness, clearly, but with kindness. And with Augie especially, that's been a little bit of a struggle. But I see lately, as we are moving toward um, the second half of his experience as a four-year-old, I see the clouds parting a little bit. I see these moments of great encouragement and kindness in him. He'll say things like, oh, mama, you're such a great cutter of those vegetables. Or, oh, mama, you're such a great reader. Oh, mama, you're such a great snuggler. And it really just changes the atmosphere of the whole house. Just a couple of days ago, I was preparing lunch for him and he asked me to peel his apple, but to refrain from slicing it. And that was not a problem. So I was going about the lunch preparations and I was thinking about other things. And I looked down and I realized I'd begun slicing the apple and I thought, oh no, this is gonna be a fight, <laughs> you know. So I just looked at it instead as an opportunity and I said, hey Augie, I totally spaced out and I sliced your apple and I'm sorry because I know that's not what you wanted, but I'm wondering if you'd be willing to eat it anyway. And he said, oh, sure, Mama, everybody makes mistakes. I'd love to eat that apple just the way it is. Thank you for cutting it. And I just took a deep breath, not just because we'd avoided a conflict there, but because it showed me that he was growing up a little bit and he's learning to roll with changes and to express himself with kindness, even if things aren't exactly the way he wanted them to be. And it just reminded me of how powerful our words really are. When I was in college, I was a journalism major, and one of my writing professors encouraged us as we were learning to write to really examine every word. And that's a practice that I have continued in my sermon writing as well as I became a seminary student and then an ordained pastor. I really examine every word so that Every word can be encouraging, even if it comes as a challenge, even if there's something challenging in the text that we're working through together, that there's an element of encouragement and hope as we grow in our faith, as Jesus calls us to do. And so I've been thinking about all of that. In terms of our current situation, it's really easy in a global pandemic, at least for me, to feel powerless at times. And there are some things that we cannot control for sure. But our words are very powerful. And I mean that in a really good and encouraging and healthy way. And we can turn to the book of Ephesians in our New Testament to talk about the power of those words. In most of our New Testament letters, we find at least one section about what it means to live in community as new creations, the way that we have been changed to operate differently with other people, especially in our families, in our communities of faith, but really with everyone that we meet. And so in chapter 4 of Ephesians, there is a section 
about living a new life. If you've been following Bible study sound bites on Thursdays with our certified lay minister Bill Wood, you will have been studying Ephesians for several weeks. We haven't made it to chapter 4 yet, so I'm skipping ahead here, but soon Bill will talk about these verses as well, and I'm excited to see what he has to say. But I want to read them to you this morning, chapter 4 of Ephesians, beginning in verse 25. So putting away all falsehood, let all of us speak truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not make room for the devil in that way. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. And here's the part that I've really been thinking about lately. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your words may give grace to those who hear. Speak only what is useful for building up the community as there is need, and there is always need for that, so that your words would give grace to those who hear. So that's my word of encouragement to you this morning, that your words have power. You have the power to make someone's day or to throw an obstacle in it. You have the power to build up the community or tear it down. So when you're feeling powerless, like you have nothing to contribute right now, or you just don't know where to start, know that your words have power. And we need your words in this community of faith, whether you're offering a suggestion, whether you are offering a word of comfort, whether you're just offering a word of connection that's so needed right now. Your words have power, power to build people up in the name of Jesus. And so I hope that you will take that empowerment and that you will use that in many different ways today and for the rest of the week, and that you will let yourself be built up by those exchanges as well, because we could all use some encouragement and that's available to us, even just in how we talk to each other. So I hope you have a great rest of the week filled with wonderful words that build you up. And I look forward to being with you again next week. Grace and peace.